everybody, after about a year of less than stellar battery life on my Samsung Galaxy Note 4, and no, it hasn't blown up, I'm actually filming on it right now, and the dogs say hi in the background. <laughs> but yeah, after less than stellar battery life, I decided to try stock Android. So about a month ago, I switched over to the Google Nexus 6P, and I've been using it for about a month, but actually I filmed about a month ago, I filmed an unboxing, so I am finally getting around to putting that up. I meant to put it up a couple weeks ago, but I ended up doing another uh, video over on my Facebook page. So if you thought I had disappeared for the last couple of weeks, I actually didn't. I just did a video over on Facebook with the live stream over there instead. So if you haven't uh, checked that out, I have uh, just a bit of an uh, update on my uh, iPhone order uh, saga or quest, I guess you could say. And uh, so that's over at facebook.com slash circle of the blind mice. I will have more videos about the, my experience with the Nexus 6P as a low vision user that will be coming up over the next uh, few weeks and months. So stay tuned for that. And meanwhile, let's get to the unboxing. Low on vision, high on tech, circle of the blind mice.com. <laughs> is Tammy, your friendly neighborhood blind mouse that likes to bubble about technology. And today I have for you an unboxing of the Google Nexus 6P done by, actually it was Google and Huawei. Huawei built to Google, brands it. After a year of only having my Note 4, I decided to cross over to stock Android. For those of you that don't know what stock Android is, it's Android without all the gimmicks, it's without the skin that the telephone companies such as Bell, uh, TELUS, or if you're in the States, AT&T, Verizon, etc. It's without the skin that these companies put over top or overlay on top of Android. I've been dying to experience Android as Google intended it for ages. I just wasn't quite ready a year ago, but I've been having some issues with the Note 4 that I've decided, you know what, I, I'm ready to make that leap. Plus Android has made some improvements in the last year with Android 7 that I uh, have decided I'm ready to make that change. I've been also curious as to, as a low vision user, how the non-fancy, you know, stock version of Android, how it compares to the Samsung version. A lot of low vision Android users do use Samsung or LG, and I've just really been curious to know how just stock Android will work for me as a low vision user. And then there's the added benefit of the Google updates. You get instant updates pretty much as soon as Google releases them. Whereas with when you're with a carrier, if you're not familiar with Android, unfortunately Android users who have a, a, a phone other than Google are stuck waiting for their carrier to approve Google's update because they've got to make sure everything's compatible with their skin that they overlay on top of it, etc., etc. So literally most Android users are stuck waiting for a year for the latest version of Android. On my Note 4, I'm still on Android 6.0, which was released in summer of 2015. We're now the end of summer of 2016, and I'm still waiting for <laughs> Android 7, and it probably won't come out until summer of next year. Now, some of you might be asking, why would I bother getting a Nexus 6P now when the, the Pixel, which is the next incarnation of the uh, Nexus lineup that Google's rebranding everything over to their Pixel line. Why would I bother doing this a month before the Pixel's set to come out? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, all the telephone companies here in Canada right now basically have Nexus 6P on sale. They're basically, you can basically get it uh, for zero dollars on a two year plan. Uh, unlike the States, we don't really have where you can kind of rent a phone, you know, where you can upgrade your, like, for example, your iPhone every year uh, without having to pay out a contract or anything. We don't have that here yet. So we're, we just only got the freaking two year contract. So like a couple of years ago for years, we had like the three year contracts and anyway, so, but it, you know, it was a good deal. It was $0 to extend my contract for another two years. I didn't get charged a penalty per se. I just had to pay out my remaining balance, which is money I would have been paying anyway through my monthly uh, payments uh, that, you know, it was part of my monthly plan. So it's not money that I wouldn't have been spending anyway. So I thought, you know what, I am going to make this change. The other reason why I decided not to wait for the pixel is I'm the more and more I hear about the pixel, 
I, the less excited I am. I know it's being done by HTC, which does awesome audio, but they split ways with, I forget who it was that was doing their boom sound speakers, but they are no longer with the company that was, that was doing those speakers. They switched companies and the Pixel is said to only have one speaker at the bottom as opposed to the front facing stereo speakers that the HTC One had, for example. Uh, a friend of mine had heard a rumor that the Pixel will have two speakers, but everything I've heard points to it having one speaker, plus the renders of the phone are pretty darn ugly. And uh, although they're just rumors, I find rumors are really just leaks these days. Uh, you know, whether it's the iPhone or the next latest Android phone, the rumor mill is pretty accurate these days. So I'm like, you know, I just really don't like what I'm hearing about that phone. And I really, really was excited and still I'm excited by the Nexus 6P. So without further ado, I'm going to do an unboxing today. And over the coming weeks and possibly months, I will be exploring the stock version of Android as Google intended it to see how it works for me as a low vision user and I'll of course report my uh, findings as I as I go along. I have been using this for a day so this is kind of an unboxing, it's kind of a, a re-unboxing but I've repackaged it as it came in the box. The only difference is is I have already Tamified the phone <laughs> so the way the layout is inside the phone will look a bit different because I've already installed Nova Launcher and made it look like my other phone but I will show you what comes in the box. Uh, pretty much repackaged that as it uh, came you know as it came so so here's the box it's a nice presentation you got this little wrap around thing picture of the next nexus 6p on the front on the back another picture and then this stuff here is basically just like the uh all the the, the skew numbers and and whatnot it says that this is the uh, gray color and i originally did actually it's funny because it's funny i ended up with gray because originally i totally wanted the gray i wasn't feeling that that's uh, aluminum or aluminum uh, back and the green one was even worse but then I totally did a 180 and I actually really like the aluminum back but when I went to Bell they informed me that they only sell the gray blackish version so I'm back to the version I want in the first place but now that I have it I absolutely love the phone it's really really nice but uh, so let's uh, undo the box so around the right hand side of the box there this is a appealable seal here so I'll just carefully undo that so I don't wreck it and then the box is uh, really nice it's it looks on the film it's gonna look like there's nothing there but it's actually got the P logo Let's see if I can yeah this is oh, e. if you squint you might be able to see that there's actually a P right here in the middle but uh, anyway so that's the box and then the back of the box has looks that feels like it's a from what I can feel it feels like it's a copyright symbol or something like that but it's definitely not a P but anyway whatever that is doesn't really matter and so then you just simply lift the lid and you have this nice little indentation there and then we've got the nexus 6p branding here and this is just a little sheet telling you everything that is in the box telling you about how you know what to do with your sim card and there's uh, you know all that fun stuff there just basically the steps you want to take when uh, using your phone for the first time then in the box we have your wall block wall brick for charging and one thing I would have liked to have seen it would have been nice if these tongs here would have been foldable but they're they're not so you're pretty much going to want to use this for home but mind you if you're traveling you probably have like a portable charger with a bunch of ports anyway so you can just plug the USB into that anyhow so that's not a deal breaker in my mind it just would have been nice if it had the foldable tongs. So then moving on we have got our charging cable. So this is a USB type C. It helps if I have it in center, sorry. So this is a USB type C. And let me make sure, do I have this? I was kind of forgetting to look at the camera. So just in case this wasn't in view when I was showing it to you, here's that charging brick one more time. Okay. 
All right, and so this is the uh, USB type C and I have not taken this out of this cardboardy boardy thing because I want to leave it all nice and neat for you because this is a longer cable but now that I'm actually unboxing the act yeah now that I'm unboxing it I will actually uh, take that off because I need to charge my Nexus 6P after I do this video so so this looks a little bit different than your standards it's more similar to kind of like the Apple lightning cables except for this the two ends here and I'm it was in, I'm not looking in the camera again sorry uh, so it's got these two ends here and they're reversible so you don't have to worry about which way you put it and if you're putting it putting it the wrong way you can put it in either way and it will uh, charge your phone of course if you um, have one of these you're going to need adapters and whatnot so uh, but Google was kind enough to actually include a, uh, a USB uh, type C to USB 2.0 was basically got a USB to uh, a C to standard USB uh, cable which we'll come to in a second here is the Nexus 6P itself which I'm just gonna put off to the side for just a moment so here Google includes 90 days of let's see if I can get it in focus but they give you 90 days of Google Play Music it's the Google version of I guess Apple Music I guess you could say then we have here and I'm gonna take this out very carefully because the sim adapter is in here or the sim uh, tool so this in addition to the sim tool which is this teeny thing right here and I'll actually take it I'm gonna regret this because I'll probably drop it and lose it somewhere show it to you in my hand it's this thing it's very very teeny and when I was sitting at my kitchen table unboxing everything just for myself I managed to lose this on my kitchen table so I wish I need to invest in some kind of sim tool holder because this thing is already fallen out of this once as well um, so actually technically I've lost it twice but thankfully I found it each time but yeah it's uh, very 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 teeny very very losable I have not missed nano sim that's one thing I really do love about Samsung's uh, phones well okay I should say Samsung phones pr you know from the note 4 and previous of course they got rid of their closable back which I are their openable back which I'm sure they're regretting right now as their phones are exploding and they're doing a mass recall but anyway um, that had nothing to do with why I switched over by the way and then here's like little instruction book which nobody's gonna read especially as blind mice because it's really really teeny even with a magnifier this is really teeny so anyhow let's put that back try not to lose my sim sim tool in the process and I'm already fighting with it one moment please talk amongst yourselves alrighty I'm gonna fight with this to put this back in again is really hard to do on film how did I do this before oh, good grief. okay one moment okay so anyway, yeah so that's that's that and then we have the uh, USB type C to USB 2.0 it's got like your standard USB side here and then the part that goes to the USB type C that goes into your phone so hang on to these now you can now it's been a year since this of course came out so it's a bit easier to get USB type C cables now but my suggestion is when you uh, when you buy spend a bit more money to get a decent one because um, people can obviously have problems with the ones that are cheaper so definitely I would you know buyer beware you get what you pay for and I think you know don't go with one that's exorbitantly expensive but don't uh, don't go for one that's like two dollars because you could have a Samsung phone where it decides to blow up because cheap charger and battery issues probably not a good combination but if you have a note 7 and if you haven't heard you need to be turning that thing off 
bring it back to your phone company and trade it in for something else. But getting back now, now that we got the unboxing out of the way, let me just carefully move everything out of the way. And we'll get to the part that if you're actually still watching me, Babylon, you probably really want to see the phone. So, comes in this nice little sleeve here. Just pop it out. And so it's a very, very nice phone. It is slightly taller than the Note 4, but it's slightly, so this way going up down, it's taller, but going this way, it's a little bit thinner. And I find even this it within with its width, it's actually slightly thinner than my Note 4 as well. And it's lighter too, despite having two stereo front facing speakers, that's this line here and this other line here. So despite that, it's still a thinner phone. And I must say these speakers are awesome. By comparison, they are louder than my Note 4, slightly clearer than the Note 4. They have a slightly uh, crisper sound. They are comparable in volume to my iPad. I was quite shocked about that. I knew I'd heard they were really good. I didn't expect them to be that good. Now the iPad Air 2 that I'm comparing them to has a slightly warmer sound, but it's the, the difference is, is negligible. It's there. They it's really on par. I was very pleasantly surprised. And I also uh, forgot to show you the button, so I'm inserting this little clip now, so I'll show you here. So on the left side of the phone, there are no buttons, but there is the SIM tray, and I'll see if I can get this in focus to show you. Okay, my phone's decided it does not want to focus. But you can kind of see that blurry little dot there. That is the SIM tray. or the, That's the hole where you poke it in to uh, eject the SIM tray. That's the only thing that's on the left hand side of the phone. So that's taken a bit of getting used to because on the Note 4, the volume keys are on the left side and the power is on the right side. So on the power side, you've got all of your keys here. So you've got the power keys, pardon me, the power, the, the buttons rather. So you've got the power button and then you've got the volume rocker. Of course, the top is volume up. The bottom part of that same rocker is volume down. And uh, other than that, we've got a headphone jack. Yes, Google still believes in headphone jacks, even if another company doesn't. And then on the bottom, you've got your USB-C charging port and on the back like i said you've got the camera and the flash and the uh, the fingerprint scanner and that is it so very very nice looking phone the, the the back of this is made out of aluminum and the screen is some level of gorilla glass and i don't pay attention to the, the level of gorilla glass everybody's on now but uh you obviously don't want to slam this on the ground, but it's um, you know pretty durable if uh, if you have a case on it. But very, very, very nice looking phone, indeed. Only slightly bigger than the Note 4. My Note 4 goes about up to here, approximately. Actually, let me just I'm filming on the Note 4, so it's, I can't really com put the Note 4 in front. But let me just take a quick look. Actually, I know the Note 4 is probably only comes up to about here, so only slightly taller than the Note 4. And then the Note 4 is about this much bigger. So like just a few centimeters, maybe half an inch bigger, uh, going you know fr from the width of it. And the, the thickness, like I said, it's slightly thicker as well. One thing that's going to take some getting used to, and I haven't had to deal with this since I had an iPhone 4, is the freaking SIM card. Oh my god, I have not missed having to deal with a nano SIM. And these SIM ejectors, and 
the fact that you cannot just open the back and oh yes I should mention that this is a closed back phone hence the sim tool you need to take it out of the side here so unlike a note 4 you cannot just pop open the back and gently press the sim out of the sim folder and take it at pop it in pop it out that way so that's a bit of a pain especially if you're a traveler if you don't travel then you won't have any need to remove your sim unless for some reason you're changing your phone number or whatever but if you are a frequent traveler do be aware that you are going to have to be dealing with the sim tray and carrying around the teeny teeny sim ejector tool or a good pen that will you know fit in there to pop that out but other than that as far as the physicality of the phone goes so far i am very um surprised that I'm actually not missing the physical home button as much as I thought I would. Now those of you who have no sight whatsoever, you're obviously going to need to use TalkBack to be able to, um, you know, feel where the, the uh, home button is because there's no actual physical button, it's just a capacitive button on the screen. For those of you who have some functional low vision, uh, the capacitive button I've noticed when you need it, it tends to light up, like right now it's lit up at the bottom here, but if you are watching, say YouTube for example, it disappears when you need, when it needs to. So when you need it, it reappear, reappears, and when you don't need it, it, you know, it disappears. So it's kind of nice in that regard. And um, what else did I want to mention just briefly here? So the capacitive buttons, surprisingly, they're working okay for me. It's getting, taking a bit of getting used to that they're opposite from the way Samsung does them. On Samsung, you have the back button on the right side and the, um, the, the button to view all your apps on the left side. And on the Nexus, it's the complete opposite of that. It's flipped around. So that's, that's taking a little bit of getting used to, but you know, I'll uh, give me like a couple days to a week and it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, but definitely the SIM tool can be a challenge if you're not used to it and you do have low vision because it is pretty small and the SIM of course is a certain shape. You got to got got get it just so, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine and uh, just have a magnifying glass with you maybe. And then on the back, you've got that nice gray finish and I had reapplied that annoying little sticker with the little ID number on there, but I'll take that off now that I've done my re-unboxing. So very nice back here. Pretty much all one piece except for this little little line back here. Obviously they put some stuff in there. And then you got the camera hump, which actually is not very big at all. And it, you, it's kind of hard to show you on video. I don't know if you can kind of see this little indent, but well, let me show you this way. See, it's like, it's barely noticeable and let me just see how much does it rock on the table it doesn't like my phone because everybody was worried like a year ago when we everyone was seeing the renders like first people thought the phone looked like super super ugly but if I like if you were like typing at the bottom here it's not rocking at all so really really minimal and I've actually after looking drooling over this phone for a year uh, watching YouTube videos I've actually fallen in love with the way this phone looks. And then of course you got the camera here and then the fingerprint scanner here. Now originally when I heard about phones having the fingerprint scanner on the back, I wasn't so keen, but you know what? It I actually like it and I prefer it and it's super fast. Certainly beats the, the scanner on the Note 4. Whether or not it's as fast as an iPhone, we shall see. In the day that I've been using it, um, so far I'm really loving it. It's very, very fast. This is running Android 6.0.1. I was surprised it's not running 7 yet, um, but I just got the notification tonight that uh, the Android 7.0 update, Android Nougat, is available. So uh, as soon as I have charged my phone tonight, I am going to be updating to that. But my experience of running Android 6.0 on this phone so far, I'm loving it so far. There have been a few challenges. If you are totally blind and considering a Nexus phone, you are gonna need someone who's sighted to help you out. When I started up my phone, it didn't have that feature that Google is supposed to be launching where it lets the phone talk to you during the setup. It's supposed to be an accessibility setting that's come, coming to 
new Google phones. That's probably going to be part of Android 7. And of course, I've already set up my phone. Um, and this comes out of the box with Android uh, 6.0. Point one in it, or actually, I came with 6.0, um, and then I had like about seven or more at least updates last night, just one after the other. I in the four years that I've been using Android devices, I don't think I've had as many updates as I have had with this. But once you have it running or set up, then you can actually ask Google to turn on. Well, you can't get Google to turn on TalkBack, which is. Um, Android's equivalent to voiceover, but you can say, okay, you can say, okay, Google, turn on access or okay, Google accessibility settings. And I'm just screwed up because it's listening to me now. Google, ignore me. Um, so yeah, you can totally, uh, you know, so, so that's get, it takes a bit of getting used to because on my Samsung, I was used to being able to triple tap my home button and turn on talk back. Now I've got to go, okay, Google, access <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say, okay, Fred, just so, <laughs> just so it doesn't keep turning on. So I can say like, okay, Fred, turn on accessibility settings and it will bring me into the accessibility window. And then I just have to press talk back and then on, and then there you go. Then I have to repeat that process to turn talk back off because I flip back and forth between having talk back on and off. So just out of, you know, with after using this for one day, that is probably my biggest pet peeve. Um, hopefully Android 7 will have a fix for that because there isn't a widget that will allow me to, um, to, to just access that in a faster way. There is a shortcut you can do, and then let me see, I'll try to do it on camera here. It's a bit clumsy. You have to hold down the power button and then ta uh, hold, uh, press and hold two fingers. Um, so you hold down the power button until you hear a beep and then you press two fingers down and then until it starts telling you that, you know, keep holding two fingers and the accessibility will turn on. So that is one way you can get directly to um, the talk back, but I find it rather cumbersome, but I'll, I'll try to demonstrate it for you here rather than babbling about it. So here we go. And this is of course gonna turn on the power off. So am I pressing the right button? One second. Let me just check my notification because I don't really want to display my notifications to the world either just one moment okay so I cleared my notification so let's see if I can replicate this annoying process so I'm pressing the power button which is going to bring the shut down thing on holding down two fingers to enable accessibility oh and did it just turn the phone off oh freaking hell it did <sighs> So you see what I ha what I mean about this shortcut being annoying because half the time I end up holding it down too long and uh, I start restart the phone. What I believe you can do to get a work around that, but again, I've only had this for a day, is you can hold it down. You're going to get that turn off phone thing, but as soon as you hear the keep holding fingers down, let go, keep your fingers down, but let go of the power button and I believe that will stop it from turning off. Um, so it's kind of a work in progress. Um, but the problem is with the Nexus is there's no physical home button. So that's why they have uh, got it like this. But I remember back when I had a note, my note two, not my note four, but my note two on Android 4.1, you could hold the power button down and you would get a whole bunch of options. You get flight mode, you would get uh, turn off, restart device. And with the, with the, um, with this version of the Nexus, uh, you're only getting the, uh, the power off option when you hold down the, the power button. And I'm just, excuse me, I'm just trying to re-enter my code because my phone of course restarted. And I, when you first restart a Nexus phone, even though you got your fingerprint registered, you have to enter your, your pin code first or your alternate unlock option. You can do like a pattern unlock. You can do a pin code. I just chose to do a pin code, but I'm going to try this feature one more time. So now I'm in my home screen and you'll see, I pretty much set this back up like on my widgets are still loading. But anyway, um, I've pretty much set it back up. Like I have, uh, my, uh, my note, uh, four. But so let's try this again. 
with the accessibility, see if I can get this to... Keep holding down two fingers to enable accessibility. Okay, so that's the key is you've got to as soon as she, Oh, stop talking to me. As soon as soon as she starts Hold on, that's bugging me. Okay. So as soon as she starts talking to you, let go of the power button, but keep your two fingers down on your your screen and that will enable talk back. Now, unfortunately, this shortcut doesn't seem to work in reverse i'm going to try it but i tried it last night and it did not seem to work in reverse uh, where um you could use this to turn talk back off so let's just try it though Power off. Home. waiting google oh, oh god it's done it again yes it's <sighs> anyhow so uh so yeah so that's one challenge but despite that um, you can, and I will, I'm going to pause the video and once I reboot this again and, um, <laughs> re-enter my code again, I will actually show you, uh, the process for, uh, turning talk back on and off. And there's still, all the other features are still there. There's still the magnifier, there's still the uh, invert colors and the color correction, all the usual accessibility features are still in this phone which is which is pretty awesome and so far i'm impressed like i wasn't sure i thought maybe it'd have to go to the play store and install talkback you know i wasn't quite sure what to expect but um it's not a whole lot different than using my samsung despite that little hiccup i'm sure some of you iphone users out there are going hell no i'm not going to go with google ever and so be it right i like technology so i like both ios and android for different reasons they both have their pluses and minuses okay so now to turn talk back off you just say okay google accessibility settings And at the top here is talk back. Talk back on in list. Talk back. So you double, you select it, then double tap. And then at the top here, there's on. a little green button. Double on switch. You tap it double and tap then double tap. Stop talk back on. Okay button. And now I'm getting the message that my phone is dying, and that would be my Note Four, not my. Um, <laughs> not my nexus but yeah as, as you can see i've totally tamified it so normally this uh this uh tray would be uh white and there would actually be five icons across uh instead of four but i have totally changed it so that i can make the icons bigger using nova launcher um so all my um drawers here are a little bit different than what you would get but my uh, my note four is really on its last leg so I'm gonna end this video so thanks very much for watching stay tuned for more uh, on the uh, the stock experience of Android and how it is with low vision thanks very much for watching I'll talk to you in the next video here at Circle of the Blind Mice, I believe technology enriches the lives of those of us with visual impairments. My mission is to help you learn tech, use tech, and embrace tech. Please share this video to help spread the word to your fellow blind mice. And if you're new here, please subscribe for new videos every other Saturday. Thanks for watching.